signs. And furthermore, we can check what the SE is for X bar. Uh, we've done this calculation before. The variance of X bar is variance of X over N. The variance of X is P1 minus P. So indeed, um, uh, the standard error is square root of P1 minus P over N. Um, so this is exactly the same as the square root of 1 over N Fisher information. So in other words, um, we achieve the Kramer-Rau lower bound for any size N. Fascinating. Um, and uh, I think I, I just calculated out here. So this is the this is the um, the SE, but if you actually wanted to to compute it from your data, you would substitute X bar for for P. Um, you'd substitute your ML estimator. Okay, and finally we can we can compute a, a one minus alpha hundred percent CI for P um, now using our large sample theory. So. Um, so, so we have p hat plus or minus. Um, so it's remember that p hat is normal. So so um, so it's z alpha over two. That is the the alpha over two quantile, um, and then the standard error square root one over n Fisher information. So that's that's that. Now, um, one thing that will be useful to us is to talk about the information in a random sample. So previously, we've been talking about the information of a single um, of a single point, single data point. Um, so it should be no big surprise that if you have um, n sample, n independent samples. Um, that you would get n times the Fisher information. And we can actually show that rigorously just using the definition. So I'm going to assume that I have IID random sample x1, xn from the same density. Then the Fisher information of the random sample, which I'm going to write as, uh, as I sub n of theta. So that's going to be the variance of the... Um, derivative with respect to theta of the log likelihood um, the the joint the joint density factors because of the independence so we have the derivative of the log of a product which is the derivative of a sum of logs using our log laws and the the derivative um, distributes across the the sum and all of these summons are um, independent, so the variance distributes, and they are all, um, they're all identically distributed. So, so these are all the same uh, derivative of the log likelihood. So we get n times the variance of the score, essentially, or n times the Fisher information. So the sample Fisher information is just n times the Fisher information. Again, the Fisher information is just the information of a single data point. The sample Fisher information is the information from, from your IID sample. So, um, so we can rewrite, um, we can rewrite the variance of the ML estimator of instead of writing one um, over n times the Fisher information, we can just write one over the sample Fisher information. And um, so this is a little bit useful because um, here, uh, when you're computing the sample Fisher information as minus the expectation of the second derivative, of the log likelihood, um, we often have uh, the second derivative of the log likelihood um, 
as a function of all of our x's. So, um, so it just makes calculations easier. I think it'll, it'll just this, the, the second derivative of the log likelihood, um, is the second derivative of the log of this joint density. Just keep that in mind. Let's take a look at an example. So we're going to have x1 to xn, a random sample, iid, uh, with density theta x um, to the theta minus 1 for x between 0 and 1, and theta positive. So there's going to be four tasks to do here. Um, we're going to find the ML estimator. You're going to find the sample Fisher information. Um, what distribution is the what distribution is the ML estimator approaching as n goes to infinity, and find an approximate one minus alpha hundred percent ci for theta when n is large. So I suggest you shut off the video and try and work these out now. Okay, we're back. So our joint density we can factor um, because of the independence, and we get theta to the n x one to x n theta to the theta minus 1. Uh, we take the logarithm and use our log laws. We get n log theta plus theta minus 1 log x1 to xn. And take the first derivative with respect to theta. So we get n over theta plus log x1 to xn. We set that equal to 0 to compute the ML estimator which we easily see is minus n log x1 to xn. Now onto part b, we're going to compute the sample Fisher information, which is minus expectation of the second derivative of the log likelihood. Now the nice thing is we've already computed one derivative of the log likelihood, so we just need to um, compute the second derivative and the first derivative was n over theta, so the second derivative is um, minus n over theta squared. So that just gives us the sample Fisher information is n over theta squared. And remember that is, this is a constant, uh, n, minus n over theta squared is a constant, so the expectation is just n over theta squared. because we're taking the expectation over all the trajectories, all the data, x1 to xn. So, um, uh, right, so now if I was asking you for the Fisher information, um, the Fisher information is the sample Fisher information divided by n. So the Fisher information is one over theta squared. Uh, so now let's find, um, the large sample theory answer. Um, the, the estimator, uh, the ML estimator is approximately normal with um, expectation theta and variance one over sample Fisher information. And we can approximate this by plugging in our, um, our ML estimator into, for theta here, and we get uh, normal theta theta hat theta hat squared over n, and then our our uh, one minus one minus alpha hundred times a hundred percent ci is theta hat plus or minus z alpha over two, um, and then the standard error square root of theta theta hat squared over n. Um, so I know what theta hat is. Um, since we computed that before, that was minus n over the log x1 to xn. So I'm just going to plug that in, and you'll get this final answer. So uh, this provides um, some good practice for you. Hopefully you also did some practice in lab last Friday, and I will see you on Wednesday. Have a great day.